Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 73. Do you know what I just realized? You always introduce our names, and I never do. How dare Isn't you? Isn't that interesting? I don't know. Uh, maybe that's why the people that don't know you, and they call you the other girl, girl with the ponytail, girl with the bun, maybe that's why they, they only go on episodes where I'm introducing us, and I don't say our names. They only watch every other episode? <laughs> Could strategically be. <laughs> they avoid the ones that I introduce but really it is like even if they're not insulting me it's always the other girl well now that we pointed that out in a previous episode now I'm the other girl so that's fun because I love that <laughs> at first I'll read it and I'll be like that's rude oh it's a joke I get it there's <laughs> been ones that Lily will send me she's like is this sarcasm or are they <laughs> Joking. I'm like, bro, they're joking. <laughs> Relax. We are uh, possibly the most um, sensitive internet podcast hosts in the world. Bad choice for a, for a job, but you know. But anyway, today's episode is, I wish I could say a fun one and we're going to get into things and it's going to be a nice chit chat thing. It's not. This is such an unfortunate episode to have to do, but we did feel it was important to do it because Ruby Frank from Eight Passengers and the Eight Passengers family in general and her partner Jody is people that we've covered on this channel. And not only people we've covered, she was in our first ever episode. I was just gonna say, isn't that the first episode we ever did? We did the, our first episode on family vloggers and like problematic yeah. family channels. And she was obviously front and center for I mean, that. It was mostly just them. Yeah, well, the thing is that I've always had a problem with her parenting. She's extremely She's like crazy. militant. Well, and now we know abusive and we did know abusive before, but now we know to the extent. The stunning turn for a Utah mother of six, a YouTube star known for her tough love parenting advice, Tonight, she is under arrest on suspicion of child abuse after police say her malnourished son escaped out a window and ran to a neighbor's house for help. Obviously, trigger warning, this entire episode is going to be touching on child abuse. Like, this is absolutely just an abusive parent. And luckily, I mean, if it helps to stomach it, we know that right now, Ruby and her partner have been arrested for um, what we'll get into in a little bit. So have some peace of mind that she is being held accountable because watching this shit is just like so fucking frustrating. But the fact that she was allowed to get away with it for so many years and on YouTube and monetize it to a point where she was like extremely well off. It's just, oh, it's disgusting. So when we found out, like I literally, I feel like I woke up yesterday to like text from you, ooh, text from a couple other people. And then you guys have, it's by far the most tagged I've ever been about any story ever. Jesse and I were saying like, we knew that she was crazy and that she was not the best parent, but like this is so far past anything I had thought was going on. And if you don't know about Eight Passengers, it is a long history, like years and years worth of really, really problematic content because Ruby herself is a very strict Mormon parent. And that's how she would describe herself, I guess. Like that's how she I lives I forgot that they were Mormon. No, I mean, how could you forget? <laughs> Literally, that's all they talk about. Like she talks about being in truth and that basically like everything else, but that is a lie. I didn't know she was like a practice- Oh like yeah. A practicing Mormon. I thought that she was like making up her, not really, but like it felt like she was almost making up her own religion with Jody when they had that connection. Screen. Honestly, maybe a little bit there, but no, they are like devout like Mormons. And that's why everything that's come out along this journey, which has been in pieces. So that's why this latest update that we're here to talk about is so jarring because it's been little bits and pieces of the crumbling behind the scenes. Like we saw like her husband all of a sudden disappearing from the Facebook group where he was very active on. And then we realized they split up. Up, her family becoming estranged and kind of speaking out in little bits and pieces. But there hasn't really been anything for a while. Not any huge developments that like we covered, I guess. Honestly, all I've seen is like Marky, uh, who's a YouTuber here on this platform who covers them a lot. He has posted a lot of their stuff over on Connections, which is, God, I feel like this is like so hard to understand if you don't know who Ruby is. But basically, she was a YouTuber, a family vlogger that left the platform and then became business partners with this girl, Jody. What is her last name? Hildebrandt. Hild Jesus Christ. Hildebrandt. I don't know, but that's like the last name of a villain, right? Like it totally is. Yes. She reminds me of like the Trunchbull. Yeah. Oh my God. She is Miss Trunchbull, but worse if that's possible. They became business partners and they started this like parental, I mean, how ironic is that? But parental advice, Facebook group and video chat thing where people would pay for parental advice. We've like laughed about it in the past because it's spelled with an X and it literally looks like, like a it's porn like a porn site, site or mm -hmm. something. But um, backing up a little more, so if you don't know who they are, family channel called Eight Passengers, and it was Ruby Frank, what's the husband's Kevin. name? Kevin. 
And then Jody comes into the picture later, but they have six kids. And over the years, we have witnessed her um, questionable, at best, abusive, at worst, parenting styles, where it's like very much the punishments never are like proportionate to what the kids did. The most like infamous one was the older kid pranking one of the younger siblings, telling them that they were going to go to Disneyland when in fact they didn't, which literally sounds like everything my older brothers did to me as a kid. Like that's like a very normal prank to make. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You were sleeping on a beanbag. I was sleeping on a beanbag since <laughs> October. <laughs> and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. It's pretty funny, but now I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. Has his sunglasses on. And I was like, we're not going to Disneyland. <laughs> and he started crying and hitting me. And he got sent away to like one of those camps that like Paris Hilton and stuff have come out about him like did they like put you in the wilderness yeah like literally he slept on the ground he said for weeks chad today has just entered the anasazi foundation wilderness therapy program mm -hmm. where he's going to spend the next eight to ten weeks living in the um anasazi desert yeah the desert mountains of arizona and He'll be with counselors and other youth that are trying to figure some things out. So you're probably wondering, what did Chad do? What did, okay, let's, we're not even going to entertain that stuff, but it's, it's an accumulation of things over years, well before we ever started YouTubing or well before we ever got into social media. And it's reached a point where uh, Chad needs to develop some very basic maturity and skills. That this is a, a chance for like a reset, like a start over, like a do over, like a fresh beginning. Yeah. They do not sleep in tents. They sleep on the bare ground or and whatever if, shelter they can. Or make. if they can make a shelter, they can sleep in the shelter they make. So if the apocalypse ever comes and the Zombies come to get us. We'll be very grateful Chad is trained. Keep working hard out here. When I come back, I'm gonna really be grateful. Do you have any clue how many people have come to me? When is Chad coming home? I don't know. The great thing about this program, he could be gone eight weeks, he could be gone 12 weeks, he could be gone 16 weeks, I just don't know. And she has been known to starve her kids. Yeah, I was gonna say one of the ones we covered was her in the car and she's like, oh, like my, wasn't the kid like four or five? She was five and she was in preschool and she forgot to pack her lunch. And the teacher contacted her and said, hey, she forgot her lunch. And she said, do not feed her. That is her consequence for forgetting her lunch. I just got a text message. Uh, from Eve's teacher and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school. This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. She goes, she knows that she's supposed to pack her lunch. I'm like, oh my God, if I, as a five-year-old was required to pack my own lunch, I would have never eaten. I know. People have been like compiling a lot of like the really problematic stuff and putting them together to kind of show in a really quick way how bad the channel was. Mom, can you give me some breakfast? You don't need food. Thank you. You're only gonna say it one more time and then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat. There's nothing to eat. Yeah, I need to go to the store. Stop. I'm going to share some of their food with you. I don't I don't think you're going to be able to eat. But if you're not responsible for your lunch and your lunch money, that's the natural consequence. 
And I'm really sorry you're learning this the hard way. There were so many moments that, I mean, literally 99.999%, if not all of it, should have never been shown. She even showed her young teenage daughter shopping for bras and like holding them up against her, like just absolutely disgusting stuff. But on top of that, she's a very, very militant, abusive parent who honestly treats their kids like they're a fucking bother. It's like, why are you here? Do what I say or like, leave me alone. Like, I don't want anything else. I'm gonna go, right? get, I'm gonna go get dressed for football. Um, you're gonna have to go find your shorts. Oh, did you see the socks you threw at the side of the garden? And you are not going anywhere unless you pick up your junk. You've got crap thrown all around. No, so you see now I'm using bad language. That's how bad of a mood I'm in. You get your socks picked up and don't you leave your stuff out anymore. Where? Oh. Right over there. Run and go pick them up. And then give me 10 push-ups. One. Put your hands straight out. They're in, they're not supposed to be out. Shape your hands forward. There you go. One, two, down further, bring your butt down. Ooh. Eve came and got in bed with me at about two this morning. It's been a very long time since she wet the bed. I was like, oh darn it, that's all right. Just go sleep on the floor in the bath. I'd be watching the movie right now. But I have to sit and watch Eve. If I don't sit and watch her eat, she literally won't. It's funny you say that because I, I when I was just driving home, um, I was listening to one a video about them in the car and it played a clip and she's like, everything in this house is mine. Yeah. And she's like giggles about it and it's so creepy. But then I kept thinking, I'm like, you have six kids. You clearly don't like kids. Why would you have six of them? Well, because there's so many people that do that. There is so many people that have children because either their religion or just societally, they believe that that's the right thing to do, but they actually fucking hate kids and they simultaneously hate themselves. So they are just demons in these kids' lives. Like seriously, it's just, it's so disgusting, but these children were never allowed to be kids. They were never allowed to do normal developmentally appropriate things because it was always like, be a fucking put together adult by like the age of four. Like, no. I mean, even like, for example, like they, even like the teenagers when they're like almost 18, she's like, you don't have a cell phone. You have access to a phone in my house. And it's like, could you imagine like being in high school and like not being able to call your friend or something unless your mom was listening? Oh, I also remember that this isn't like abusive. It was just like mortifying, I would think. One of the things we covered was she freaked out because one of the kids in their class, they were learning a dance or something. Girl, it was fucking Flo Rida, apple bottom jeans. Yeah, it was, it was low um, <laughs> by Flo Rida. And it didn't even have any of it, like it wasn't even an inappropriate part of the song. And Ruby was crying in her car, upset that they were subjecting her child to this. I am so upset. I'm so angry. I could scream. And I had an appointment with the principal and she had the assistant principal. I said, I have a concern about, about the TikTok dances. She said in the fall semester, and in the spring semester, we need to have a performance. A flash mob is a great way to get it in. It's efficient, it, the kids love it, they have fun with it, and um, they are able to check off their performance for their grade. I said, my problem is the choice of songs. And she says, well, all the songs were approved by me. The teacher put together a list of songs and she gave them to me and I approved them. And I said, okay, so you approved this song. You know what that goes to show? That goes to show how little it has anything to do with her kids or anything about like it's actually control. caring for them. Yeah, it's that losing that control is absolutely unfathomable for her. She cannot handle that. Yeah. So she lost it in that moment and couldn't get like, she was literally like berating this like principal or administration or whatever. And they were like, basically like lady get the fuck out of my office and she just started crying because she just couldn't handle that but i do have a couple of tiktoks that we can watch okay so i'm gonna just play this uh just in no particular order just to get a better idea of the shit that she's gotten away with thus far oh p.s the two oldest kids i don't know about the the son that he hasn't spoken out but the daughter has been vocal she has cut off the mom doesn't talk to her anymore yeah as well as her sisters do not speak to her a lot of the family is estranged and understand how abusive she is and what we've learned is that they have been trying to save the kids from this for a long time and it is very difficult to do you know to get people in the right area of the law to give a shit and to understand the gravity of it is really difficult so ultimately they weren't even successful with that and it had to be 
really dire circumstances to finally bring these people to get fucking arrested. This is insane. But um, yeah, this, I'm pretty sure any video with that like background, remember the one that everyone did during quarantine? Is Connections. Yeah, is Connections. So I think this is one of her little Connections podcasts when she's telling a lovely story that she remembers about her kids. And we lived in a townhouse and there were a lot of stairs that went up to my bedroom and the, the family room was down a long flight of stairs. And I put my my two children, my almost six-year-old, she's probably five, and then um, Chad, my three, almost four-year-old, in the on a couch, and I put on a movie. And I said, I am going to go lay down. Do not <laughs> move from your couch. You, you got your blanket, you've gone to the bathroom, um, the, the doors were locked and bolted, and I said, I'm going to go lay down. I'm going to lay your sister down for a nap, and the baby, and I'm going to go lay down. And when I come down, uh, I will get some lunch for everybody or a snack or whatever it was. So they were fed, they were full, they were emptied. And, and so I thought, okay, everything's good. And I made it very clear. I said, do not under any circumstance, go into the kitchen. Do not, do not go into the kitchen. You just stay right there and watch the movie for an hour. To your three and five year old. Before she talks about the result of what happened when she left her three and five year old alone, bitch, are you dumb? Like, are you actually dumb? First of all, just saying like, don't go in the kitchen. She's lucky the story ended up like it did and not with like her five year old grabbing a fucking knife and them falling on it. Like, hello? Literally, I mean, I'm thinking of even like that stupid fucking um, TikTok challenge where it would be like, I'm gonna put the candy here. Don't touch it until I get back. Like a three and a five year old are not gonna sit there and not move and remember that it's like, oh, we're gonna get... Oh I'm not a fucking scientist, but I do know that it's not until a while from then, I believe, that they even develop that impulse control. Like, they are literally yeah. like, do this. And that is just the first thing they do. To actually sit and be like, okay, mom told me not to. That's not even a thing until you're like a fucking teenager. You don't even like get and that in your brain. And because she's napping? Well, that's the thing that pisses me off the most. I'm like, bitch, you want to lay down? Like, I'm sorry, do we get that option? Because last time I checked, we're just supposed to stay tired and go fuck ourselves. <laughs> you're like, last time I checked, I was falling asleep standing up, but cool. But anyway, let's see how this ended up for Ruby and her kids. An hour later, I came downstairs and the movie was still going and they were sitting on the couch and they were cuddled in their blankets. I thought, oh, good. They did what they were told. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so relieved. Okay. So I went into the kitchen to start preparing some food. And as I walked on the floor, my feet went, they, they stuck, they stuck. I'm like, my foot is stuck to the floor. And as I lifted my foot up off the floor, it went, like you could, you could hear the stickiness. I could hear it with my ears. I thought, oh my you can gosh, hear it with your ears. what is on this floor? And I took another step and my foot stuck and went like, it was like just sticking on the floor. And I thought, what, what is this? this fucking sound effect? So I did what any mother would do. You know what I'm going to say, young moms? <laughs> no. I knelt down on the floor and I smelt it and I couldn't, I couldn't quite tell. And I <laughs> stuck my tongue out and I licked the floor. I'm like, oh. And I this is completely a side note. What the fuck you mean we all know what you're talking about, bitch? I would die before I lick any liquid that's on the floor in my house. Do you know the probability that that's either my son's or my dog's piss? Do you understand the probability of that? Like, why would you just straight up start fucking licking it? Are you okay? I oh, know she's not okay, but... Yeah, I was like, leaving her kids in the other room aside this is the weirdest reaction to but doesn't it show how deranged she is where she's just like young moms you're gonna get it no the fuck no it feels very like white glove like i didn't put this here like there's dust here now what are you talking about yeah, oh well of. that's what she gets into she's like this place was clean like why why is this out of place because you left your three and five year old alone this is pineapple juice what in the world how 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 did pineapple juice get on the floor and everywhere i walked my foot stuck to the floor and I thought, what, what, how, how I'm trying to put the pieces together. Like what happened? So I called my two kids and I said, I said, come here. And they came over and I said, do you guys know why this floor is sticky? No, 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 we don't know. And I said, I, this floor was absolutely clean before I went upstairs. I went upstairs for an hour and I came down and now it is covered, covered. There is something that's going on and one of you or both of you know something and you're not telling me. And I'm going to stand here and tell you do. It's not even done yet, but I just hope that she becomes someone's little bitch in prison where she gets bossed oh around God. and say, go the fuck over there and don't fucking come back. Like she's giving like um, in uh, Matilda when he's like, I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're small. Like he's yeah! giving that. Listen, you little wiseacre. 
I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I'm so angry. I'm going to be so angry Two this Matilda whole episode. references already. What was the other one? Uh, Trunchbull. Oh my God, what the fuck? The, not the Matilda episode. Wait, so I texted my friend that um, we have consulted for her opinion on things in the past when it's been like child abuse situations oh, right, right. or adoption situations because she used to work like adjacent to the foster system. But she also used to work in a prison. So I told her and she goes, oh my God, that's so sad. I hate people. Those parents deserve what prison will do to them. And I said, truly. And she goes, that's one thing I find peace in. Prison takes care of people who hurt women and children. And then she said, it's one of three rules of prison. Don't say bitch, don't snitch, and don't hurt women or children. When people figure out what her charges are, hopefully, you know, they'll just have a nice conversation with her. That's all I hope. Nothing else. Oh, nothing and I more. just, I can just picture her just like, she, she can't handle oh, she'll she can't shit handle her a little pants. pineapple juice on the floor she's gonna lose it and then she's acting like they're like being mischievous and hiding it from her well, like that's the uh, thing is like no wonder they would even hide it from her because she's such a scary bitch but besides that look at what her fucking kids said in response it's literally like heartbreaking oh no my son said um i know i know why it's sticky i said oh and why is that well um, I thought I cleaned it up, but I guess I didn't. Him saying this in his, you know, three or four year old vocabulary. He showed me that in the fridge, there was a big Tupperware of pineapple, pineapple with some juice in it. And he said, I went into the kitchen and I got the Tupperware of pineapple and I opened it to get some pineapple and it spilled and went everywhere. And I hurried and picked up all the pieces of pineapple. And then he, he showed me, he said, I got a paper towel and I cleaned up all of the mess and put the lid on and put it in the fridge. So it, it, it didn't look like there was anything wrong. Well, you as anybody, anybody older than four years old knows that if you have pineapple juice and you take a paper towel and you soak up the pineapple juice, you don't, you're not actually cleaning the pineapple juice. You're just making it look like there's no pineapple juice. You're surprised that he didn't know which cleaning solution to use. Like, oh, let me actually use the Lysol diluted in 10% water. Anyone like, older than that would know. I'm like, yeah, but it's a fucking no, no, three-year-old. And, and my question is, would you have preferred that your three, four, five-year-old, who knows, went into your toxic cleaning cabinet, got cleaners you know and like messed around would. with it yeah like literally i guess she would have but like right then and there you had a child who first of all was probably just scared shitless so i don't even want to say like he realized what happened and like just wanted to clean up he was probably terrified of your reaction but also what's crazy is like first of all your kid went into the fridge because he was hungry he wanted fruit he didn't even want bro if i leave my <laughs> if i leave my son alone when i say he'll be knee deep in a nutella jar i mean it and it'll be like hidden in the back of a spice cabinet that we haven't touched in like a year even the way she describes it she's like he opened the refrigerator. He took out this Tupperware. Like, she's acting like he, like, just, like, threw flour all over the kitchen or something. It's like, no, he was trying to get some fruit because he left him there. Okay, to not to, like, continue hour, on with bitch. the Matilda references, but, like, literally, like, what Miss Trunchbull did with um the kid who's eating the chocolate cake. He wanted a piece of cake, and she made him eat the whole Brucey. fucking thing. Yeah, like, that's very much her energy. Your kid wanted fruit. Then they dropped it accidentally. Then they cleaned up after themselves, regardless of if it was perfect. They didn't know how to use the cleaning solution, so they fucked up. And just the way that she was describing it of like, one of you is not telling me the truth. It's like, bitch, honestly, it's a win that there isn't shit smeared everywhere. Like, what are we talking about here? That's not a big deal. The fact that they knew it was wrong, but not why it was wrong. They just knew mom's gonna be mad. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's the thing is like, it seems like that's her parenting, is bullying. Scaring the shit out of them. Yeah, and using the ultimate control that she controls their resources, the roof over their head, their food. Dude, it's so frustrating too, because as a mom, and I just honestly, as a mom also to a special needs child, which I'm like, bitch, thank the thank fucking Lord. God. Thank the yeah. fucking Lord that they did not end up with you, you wicked witch. Because honestly, you are not even close to a percentage of a person that could deal with that. But literally, like children graze all day. After a certain age, they're just like little snack machines. They like run around and do things and just eat like all day. That is literally like their eating pattern. I've spoken to multiple pediatricians because I've been so worried about like my son and stuff and they're like, dude, he's in a snacking stage. This is how it happens for them. They like stop wanting the big meals and they just want to graze and snack all day. That's completely normal. And the fact that she's like, you ate, just like sit down, don't fucking move, which is like literally against everything in their DNA at that age. They like cannot stop moving. They're like 
I remember being like electric at like, a, you know, under 10. Like I was just running everywhere. Like that's all I did. I mean, I feel like she's like expecting her kids to like join her in an intermittent fast. Like she treats them like they're adults and they're I not. I know. There is some other clips. This one's like more of a compilation of her with her kids. And we'll just give that a watch before we get into this update. 29 pounds. You don't need any suckers anymore. You're too old. You're too big. You slept in. If you missed that, that was her telling her daughter that she was 99 pounds. She doesn't need any lollipops. Are you kidding? Yeah, like basically fat shaming her daughter. You slept in. She's notorious for sleeping in. And she woke up and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to wake her up because every time I wake her up, she gets super grumpy and upset. And I have to literally drag her and get her dressed. And she's old enough to do that herself. And she missed preschool. She slept in and she woke up and she's like, I'm ready to go to preschool. I said, you know what? Preschool's over. You slept through it. I'm sorry. And she's like, what? And I said, you need to get up and get ready if you're going to go to preschool because I'm not going to drag you out of bed. And she can't control when she wakes up. Apparently she can. No, because no, I woke her up. Oh my God. That's the daughter that is now 18 or maybe even older now that has cut everyone off. But it just showed her she was like helping the little girl get dressed. Well, because what do you mean you're pre- I can barely set an alarm and wake up on time. How the fuck is a preschooler supposed to do that? I literally wouldn't have gone to school. No, like my mom had to come into my room like four times minimum. Yes. And wake me up because I was fucking tired and school starts too early for kids anyway. Like that's fucking insane. You don't get personal space because this is my space because I'm the parent. If you want your own personal space, you'll need to get your own space. This is mine. And as long as you're living in my home, it is my job to know everything about you. You don't get to sneak, you don't get to hide, you don't get to have secrets. Not in my house. Do you see how loving that is? Um, by the way, secrets, apparently, um, according to her and Jody, who we'll get to in a bit, that includes in their connections group. This is, the connections gives like parenting advice, which I cannot believe anyone actually was taking. But um, secrets from the parents include if they have an eating disorder. So your daughter is not losing control over her eating habits. Your, your daughter is choosing to be deceitful around her eating choices. Or if, if they're gay. Yeah, I was gonna say, if they're gay, they're very homophobic, very transphobic. LGBTQ, I think there's an I now, plus, plus. Okay? It's another of these movements that are going on in our world that is divisive. Well, it is, I mean, they're putting meaning on the words and I don't, it's constantly changing, so it's putting people on edge, like, did I say that right? Did I miss a letter? Did I miss something? Do I not know? Oh, you don't know what that means? Transgendered, as they call it. That's just a made up word. Somebody made it up and there still isn't any truth to it. It doesn't matter how you angle it, how you talk about it, how many people support it. There's no truth in, I was born in a wrong body. Even though someone says, but I feel it. I feel it. It doesn't oh. matter if you feel it. I feel all sorts of things on a daily basis. And most of it's like completely dramatic and wrong. And she encourages people to go rummaging through their kids' stuff and read, read their, their diaries. diaries. Yep. Yeah. Children are not entitled to privacy. I know that's a lot of pushback right there, but this is a mother who knows that privacy is not a principle. Do children have a right to privacy? And I would say very clearly, no. Everything in their life is open to you. Everything, uh, journals, um, they're, they're, you know, if they, if you've graciously given them a room, that room's yours. It's not theirs. Your drawers. Um, everything is up to investigation whenever you want to go and investigate. There is no personal space. She means that. And to that I say, can someone point me into the direction of where anybody's fucking kids asked to be born? Last time I checked, you're the one that fucked Kevin and brought them into this world against their will. Fuck anyone who does this shit. Like, I treat my children accordingly. I treat them like I decided to bring you into this world. Why the fuck am I going to punish you for that? There's certain things where you want to, like, guide people and you want to, like, tell your children, hey, maybe this is a better way to handle the situation. But to treat them like that, be like, this is my space. Well, bitch, why'd you bring me into it? Like, cause I didn't ask to be here. Literally as a joke, I'll see people tweeting being like, hey, this is unfair. I didn't ask to be here and now I have to work and pay bills and stuff. But like she treats her like two year old like that. There's a difference between being a parent that's burnt out, that has lapses in judgment or feeling like so overwhelmed and just touched out and you just can't deal with anything. And one that literally just like acts like, why the fuck are you here? Should we just read the what the charges are? Should we, or do you have some other ones you wanna watch first? Honestly, there's just one more TikTok that is like short and it's with her and Jody. God, when I see them now, like when I always saw them, my skin crawled, but now it's like, 
Jesus, like a visceral reaction. Jody makes Ruby look like not that bad, I feel like. I don't mean that, but like she's just so bad. No, no, I actually like really want to get into their dynamic because we know when they started like colluding together and getting together on all this shit, things really did start to get more extreme and really, really downhill for both of them. So yeah, you might be right. And we'll get to the charges, but it was from Jody's house. Right that mm -hmm. the kids were taken. So they're not like romantically involved. That we know of. <laughs> I mean, definitely not because they're they're very homophobic. Well, yeah, but that's probably why they are on the DL, you know? True. <laughs> Basically, Jody comes into the picture and even will like scold Ruby during little videos that yeah. like, Ruby will say something. Where she slips she'll... up and isn't that extreme. Yeah. I was a hugely disconnected, selfish, aggressive, neglectful mother. Entitled. Entitled. So it definitely seems like Jody's the like the superior one here. For sure. And as if all this isn't alarming enough, we found out how Jody came into the picture. It turns out that she actually used to be Chad's therapist. A, a phone call yesterday with my therapist and she taught me about truth and distortion. Mom probably talks about Jody all the time, but. I've mentioned Jody a few times. She has a podcast called Connections with an X. Anyway, what did, what did you learn? Well, I learned about the three different types of pain, and uh, we can feel pain in ways of our own choices, other people's choices, and just like random events. And it's our way to choose to see things in truth. So, me deciding that my stomach ache was Chad's fault was not seeing things in truth. Right. But I really, really want to blame him. <laughs> So apparently that's how Ruby met Jody, and then this happened. Jody Hildebrandt is a therapist and life coach. She helped us with Chad so much, and and what she has taught is truth. I am going. Are you guys ready for this? I am going to be trained by Jody to become a life coach. Uh, this was just a clip of them together. That was weird. A year ago, my daughter was saying her prayers. Eve, she was six years old at the time. And she was saying her prayers and she said the cutest thing. I thought it was so cute. And I started laughing. She said, Dear Heavenly Father, please help me to survive. And I thought it was so so cute and it just took me off guard and mm -hmm. I kind of giggled a little. She was, that was an experience for her and she melted. She, she melted. She was angry and yeah. I, and I, and she started crying. It's so cute that her child prayed what and asked fuck? God to help her survive. How would that ever be cute? Well, because she's a fucking lunatic, crazy person. but like, oh yeah. my God. Maybe in her eyes, it was like this ultimate moment of like seeing her daughter weak and like, I don't know. And she finds it funny. I honestly, I think they're so deranged. But what's interesting about their dynamic, the Jody and uh, Ruby dynamic is, do you remember when we covered them and we realized that Jody used to be a therapist that was like lost her license because she would like pit her like clients against each other or like would ruin their lives type of thing. Something like that. I don't really remember the details of that, but that sounds very spot. I believe that 100%. Yeah, she used to be a therapist and then people, she has multiple complaints that led to her losing her license from what I remember. And it was because she would like manipulate her clients to like basically ruin their lives. By the way, also when I was pulling clips, I discovered a little more about Jody's uh, suspended license. Here's a TikTok that explains it. Now, Connection Coaching is this coaching company that uh, Jody, as well as Ruby, had created. Both of them have licensing and coaching and clinical psychology and things of that nature. So they started this for like couples therapy and men's therapy and women's therapy. But it was brought to a giant halt sometime around 2022. Um, but then resumed back in 2023. Now, what you're looking at is uh, Jody Hillenbrandt, who was hit with an 18 month suspension on her license, her psychology license, or her, you know, whatever mental health coaching license, because she tried to extort a man out of two thousand dollars, honey. Now, this article really sums it up, and it says that Hillenbrand was put on probation and in danger of losing her license as a clinical mental health counselor because she had a patient by the name of John Doe who had reported her license because he began going to counseling back in 2008. Well, it turns out when he was questioning the motives of the therapy as well as the total cost of $2,000 per session, that's when Hillenbrand stated that she was going to expose him for having a corn, 
addiction, which she didn't have. She also stated that she was going to tell the LDS church. And I remember they're out of Utah, so everybody's connected to LDS. And when she started threatening that against him, that's when he went to the state to talk about that license. I don't know if this is the man, but he post somebody posted this comment on their Instagram page, The Connection Coaching. And it says that it was only a matter of time before you'd be exposed, Jody. And this is directed toward Jody. The comment goes on to say that I knew from the moment I met you, something was incredibly off with you, something dark and haunting. You play a significant role in ruining relationships of some of my loved ones with your distorted counseling. He goes on to say that you brought a tremendous amount of pain to these families, including mine. And I hope the situation teaches you a lesson that you've been needing and allows you the time to get the counseling yourself to find the peace moving forward. And then he goes on to say that no more pain from you or your clients. I don't know what that meant but he said it with his whole chest i'm gonna keep digging because i know there's a lot more going on with this passenger eight this jody hillenbrandt and everything else connected to connection coaching i mean i think that a lot of the people that were seeking or what it seemed like there was a lot of trolls on their like site yeah. for sure there was a lot of people who were just there to like bullshit them but i think the people that were actually seeking like genuine parenting advice from them are probably people that are deeply stuck in religion probably specifically like the mormon religion that have that like conflict with maintaining that extremely strict parenting and so they were kind of like hey i don't know if i should be doing this and they're like do it it was like them giving them the okay yeah yeah and uh, i mean where else are you gonna find that because anywhere else people are gonna be like uh no that might be actually abusing your child it's interesting also that the siblings all have family channels as well also we find out like the so yes we'll sorry we keep being like we'll get to the details but um jody and ruby have both been arrested but the dad has not and they have been separated for a while now we don't know really where he's at some people think he might even have custody of the kids right now so since filming there has been an update on kevin frankie apparently sources with knowledge of him and ruby's relationship claim that she actually kicked him out of the house sometime last year we don't know the details surrounding that but on late thursday apparently his lawyer made a comment to page six on behalf of his client that Kevin Frankie's quote urgent focus is simply to keep his children together under his fatherly care and while there has been a lot of speculation on where the kids are and whose custody they're in a lot of people thought maybe they even are with Kevin according to the page six article it does say that the four Frankie kids remain in the care of the Department of Child and Family Services so that does lead us to believe that they are not with the dad which I think we can all agree is probably for the best because while Jody and Ruby seem to definitely be the worst ones here he's definitely been involved in a lot of the questionable parenting choices. You have to remember, because everything was documented over the years, people also remember Kevin in all of this because he was in the videos as well and he was co-signing a lot of this behavior. <clears throat> so you're all like, what, I have your attention now? Mm -hmm. Is that it? You're okay. all gonna listen? There, so. If you have something in the bag that you would like out, you can pay cash for it. So you learn the value of your items or um, you can give what? Dad, I'll let you take the conversation um, from here. You can do an equivalent value chore to get it back. What's it? And whatever isn't claimed by the end of the day goes in the garbage. Take it even a step further. When we all identified that things were getting more extreme, which was in the connections group, he was there. Do you remember? It's like we commented on like, this is a mom group. Why the fuck are you here, mm -hmm, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Like he was there co-signing all the crazy bullshit they would say, including the transphobic, homophobic, no privacy bullshit. So he absolutely believes in all of this. As of right now, he is not being charged with anything. So let's just get into the charges that Jody and um, Ruby are facing. And then we could kind of discuss what's going on, what the updates are, and just just like overall how fucked all of this is. So this morning news broke. So I don't know what time this happened, but I'll just read that we're, this is the New York Times article. It says a Utah mother who chronicled her strict parenting style on YouTube and other social media channels was arrested and charged with aggravated child abuse this week after one of her children climbed out of a window and ran to a nearby house seeking help. That alone, I read that. I was like, holy shit. And apparently the help that the kid was seeking was that they were hungry and thirsty. They asked for food and water. Are you familiar with the Turpin family? I am, yeah. 
That case is so disturbing. This reminds me of that. The only difference, honestly, would be that, like, they're not dirty. Yeah. And they were, like, allowed to go out and, like, meet people. The Turpin family, like, Jordan was the, the daughter that escaped. And literally, they were, like, chained up and not, like, she had never talked to a person outside of her family before. What's crazy is that the neighbor, luckily, um, noticed that not only was the child that came or the teenager that came extremely emaciated and like malnourished looking and just sick looking but they also had like remnants of duct tape on their wrists i believe which shows that they were like ankles they were bound jesus christ i know literally i'm like duct tape like are you fucking kidding the fact that the kid escaped and went and didn't ask for help like they just wanted food and water well because have you ever felt like obviously we've never felt what that person's feeling but have you ever felt like so either like you have to pee really bad or oh, you're yeah. so well, that's hungry the only or thing you're so thirsty it is what makes me sad about that is that they probably to a certain extent had accepted yeah. that that was just part of their life and really were just like hey I'm I'm hungry like I just need to get food right now and that's just like oh my god it, hmm, I need to like hold back how angry it makes me because it just makes me so angry that I'm gonna just be screaming into the microphone what's even weirder about this is that it was apparently Jody's house that they were escaping from. I don't find that weird at all. I feel like the progression of everything we've seen with Ruby and Jody very much gave the vibe of like, they're almost like some weird fucking sister wives without a husband that are like engulfed in this weird ass fucking world together. And in a lot of ways, they both enabled each other to make it this huge thing where they were cracking down on parenting together. And like, I don't know, it was just like this evil little world they both created. But I didn't find it actually shocking that it was Jody's house. I'm like, oh, Ruby's kids were at Jody's house. Yeah, that actually fucking makes sense because they're both fucking insane. It's not that it's like, why would they be there? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure she would bring them over there. But it sounds like they were like, living there no i'm saying living to i see them living together i absolutely see because when you are a part of like deranged shit like this you become more and more closed off to the outside world and you do kind of close that circle as far as you possibly can and that's what they were doing like if they i'm not saying they were living together i don't know if they were but i can absolutely see it happening where it's like let's just live and do our weird little shit in our house in peace and do it how we want so they were both arrested on wednesday but they were charged on friday with six counts of aggravated child abuse, according to the Washington County Attorney's Office. Each count carries a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison and a fine up to $10,000. So times six. So they would be, they're going to rot in fucking prison. According to the affidavit, Miss Frank's 12-year-old son, identified as RF in the document, climbed out of a window at Miss Hildebrand's home and went to a neighbor's house on Wednesday morning, asking for food and water. The child had duct tape on his ankles and wrists, as well as open wounds. He appeared to be emaciated and malnourished. And I know that there's like a dispatch call. I, I, it's on Marky's video. Yeah, I don't even yeah, want to listen to it. I don't want to hear it either. But I know that apparently whoever was like documenting it was saying like the wounds are like severe. I mean, I know that everyone thought it was bad, but it's so much worse than I think anyone could have fathomed because this is not just you being a shit ass abusive parent. This is you being a monster. That's what I was like saying. I'm like, I, we knew she was awful and like did horrible yeah. things and was yes, Absolutely. neglecting them and abusing them, but not in this type of abuse, which it's just like, holy shit, what was, she, what, what else was she doing? Like, you don't fucking is absolutely just infuriating is that as her kids were being abused to this extent as no human in general I mean even them in prison won't be treated like that like you are literally just you're monsters but while they're doing that they are profiting off of being parents of their old content of their children. And giving other people advice. Well that's the thing is like you're still profiting off of being a parent while your kids are fucking bound somewhere and like what kind of level of evil do you have to be nothing about this situation hints to me that this was the first time any of this no, would happen. No, it's no. not like oh we just got carried away and like just if they had open fucking wounds that were untreated someone gets a fucking scrape in my house and we're pulling out the johnson and johnson fucking kit and we're taking care of it like for someone to have open like festering wounds and fucking duct tape residue this has been happening for so long and this is not the first time it not happened it. and apparently it wasn't just duct tape because it says here, this next paragraph says, the neighbor called the police who then found Ruby's 10 year old daughter Eve at Miss Hildebrandt's. She also appeared to be malnourished. The affidavit said both children were taken to the hospital. The boy was placed on a medical hold due to his deep lacerations from being tied up with rope and from his malnourishment. I don't even know. 
what to say to that. Jesus, I, I didn't know that part. That's like extremely disturbing. The reason why it actually just gives me like, I'm like shaking my leg. I'm just so fucking like, I can't even deal with this is because how the fuck do you grow something in your body? The, the most ultimate connection a human being can have with another human being. And you fucking do this shit. You are not just a monster. Doing this to a human being you have no association with is being a monster. Doing this to your children, you're scum. You'd never fucking belong in public again. She has no fucking place among us. Like that's how I feel. They should have been locked up for doing the other weird shit that they were doing without rope and duct tape. But this is just like, this is sick. I think that that's also speaking to the unfortunate reality of our system, which is that it does have to get to such a point of threatening children's lives. Like the family has said, they've been trying legally to help these kids. They've known for a long time. And the fact that it's all on the fucking... I mean, not all of it, but it's like, it's all online. Literally, I feel like the internet's been like rejoicing basically. And it's like, finally, everyone's been saying this for years and it's just kept going. No big deal. If this doesn't show people that family vloggers are absolutely full of shit, like this is a person that for years of her life stood in front of a camera and pretended that she loved her children. Like that's actually fucking insane. <laughs> Not well. Not well because it always seeps through the cracks, but like enough people believed it for her to profit off of it for a very long time, you know, and see it as like, oh, she's just a strict parent. Oh she's my just God. religious, Speaking she's just whatever. Of, you know, I said like, are they tying him up to film a YouTube video? Miss Frank was seen on a YouTube video filmed in Miss Hildebrandt's home that was posted two days ago. Adding that Miss Frank and Miss Hildebrandt, 54, had knowledge of so yeah, that they both knew. The abuse, malnourishment, and neglect. And then it says the two children were believed to be in direct care of Miss Hildebrandt. That's interesting because I could also see, because we've like witnessed throughout watching them on connections that she is the more manipulative she's one. She's like the iron fist one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the proper term is, but she's definitely the one calling the shots and like, again, like just putting Ruby in her place. I wouldn't be surprised if she somehow manipulated Ruby as well. Not say Ruby is absolutely in on this too, but like being like, hey, like let me handle your children. I'll get them straight or some shit like that. I was just gonna say like, she plays the bad guy as if Ruby's not already the fucking bad guy, but like, she'll be like, I'll teach them. I think about it from a, a parent's perspective too, just knowing like for, with my kids like there's a routine right and then like at the end of the day you go to sleep and as a parent you just sit in bed and think about all the ways you fucked up that day <laughs> and you're just like oh I gotta gotta do better tomorrow because oh my god literally it is our job to self-reflect as parents and be like okay so I want to do this and that and the other tomorrow whatever and I'm not even talking about abuse I'm talking about like they need to eat better tomorrow like you know what I mean like I need to fucking get some fruits and veggies in these kids like what the fuck how do you lay your fucking head down at night you have to ask yourself the question like are these people 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 like I know they're humans but like well that's the thing I'm like there has to be some kind of like mental illness going on for them to think that that's but I okay. also think that some like, people are just fucking evil I don't think there's a fix for it I just think something is fucked in their brain because there's no way a normal person could do that like the Chris Wattses of the world like some people are just actually I used to not think that I used to have the dumbass fucking belief that everybody was redeemable and like listen if uh, the right circumstances or whatever anyone can be redeemed and I just don't think that anymore. Like, I just, I really don't. I think of even my daughter or my son, like, they'll want me to get up and go do something for the fucking thousand time. Like, literally the thousand time they just want to go and, like, my daughter wants me to look at a poster and sing the weather song. I'm like, girl, like, I am fucking exhausted. And if I don't go, like, I literally see her heartbreak. And I know that sounds dramatic, but, like, children trust you with everything. And if you just so happen to be a shitty person, that's, like... They were just born in with like a bad luck situation because either you're born into a shitty family or you're born into a family that cares about you. Like it's pure fucking luck in life. And some people are just fucking monsters. Well, and then they're born into fucking Ruby's family. But then also Jody comes into the pic. Like they already think they have it bad probably. And then new character comes in. Like, could you imagine? I feel like I joke around that like people should have to take a test before they can take their kids home from the hospital. But like... I'm not joking anymore. That is actually something that like they should have like a psych screening and a YouTube channel scrubbing. <laughs> Isn't it like Thailand that you can't adopt them and have them on camera or something for a year? Yes, That's Nikki, Nikki Philippi. Philippi. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. Um, but so continuing on, it says a search of Miss Hildebrand's home found evidence consistent with the markings, meaning the rope and the fucking duct tape. The police contacted the Utah Division of Child and Family Services and a total of four children were taken into its care. 
So as I mentioned earlier, Ruby had kicked Kevin out of the house sometime last year, and it seems like the neighbors mark that as when things really escalated. They claim that after her husband was out of the home, Frankie would leave the house for weeks at a time with the children inside. The male neighbor recalled how Frankie's youngest daughter, Eve, who's about 10 years old, would wander the neighborhood while her mother was away for prolonged periods after she kicked Kevin and Frankie out of the house. And it also did not seem like she was attending school, which checks out because I found this clip. I'm excited because I'm, I'm homeschooling all my kids now and it's fun it's enjoyable i pulled them from school and and we've had um some really great experiences so far we my girls were talking over the christmas break and i was hearing some of i i'll call it control that's been going on in their classrooms and i was i mean i wanted to say i was shocked but i mean i shouldn't say i was shocked because i you know, I, I've known this stuff has been going on. And obviously Eve wandering around the neighborhood was alarming to the neighbors. And according to the female neighbor, she said she made an initial call to CPS around September of 2022. After that, she said she saw authorities making a wellness check. However, no one answered the door. And at some point after the officers left, papers were put up in the windows of the home. So it seems like the neighbors were trying for a while to get this handled. And I know that there was also even a petition going around online that was urging CPS to go check it out, but it wasn't until this incident that they actually did. Care. So from our understanding, they're the only minors, right? Sherry is the oldest. Gotcha. I think the son maybe just turned 18, but no one has really heard from him. Sherry, though, has been like publicly, she's been vocal on social media and said like she does not talk to her parents and she has cut them out, but she's been trying to save her siblings. And now even she has done like a public outreach to people saying, will you please send me any like disturbing clips that have evidence of either from um, connections or from eight passengers. I've seen that. That she can use to like build a case. Yeah, I've seen that. She has like a, a Google, open Google Doc or something like that where people can add things to. I just hate that she even has to do that because she lived through 18 That's years of I abuse. That's what I was I'm like, how about CPS goes on the fucking YouTube channels themselves and watches one I don't video. blame her though like, because when you go through something and you're like faced with an injustice or you feel, you know, like this is fucked up, you automatically, I feel like, want to take things into your own hand. And you're like, no, I'm not leaving this to anyone else. I just read ahead. And oh God. And we have one piece of good news. A judge on Thursday denied bail for both Let of Let's fucking go. Hell yeah. But do you want to know why? Because of the severity of their injuries. I mean, not good that it was I that. I mean, I'm thrilled that they're not allowed out on bail, but like, how bad were, oh my God. To a certain extent, when she's doing the more just like militant parenting that we've seen on the channel and stuff, they maybe are excusing that in their head and like thinking like, no, we're, we're doing a good job. There's no way you're tying them up with rope, you're duct taping them, and they're giving them severe injuries that you are possibly thinking, you know what, I'm doing a stand up job. Like that not. has crossed a threshold. Like I don't understand how you justify that in your head. Oh my God. At one point they had 2.5 million subscribers. Not to put the blame on anyone else, but it's like, shit, why were people subscribing and watching that? Like, because they were also big during the height of family vlogging channels. I mean, I used to follow OK Baby and watch all their videos before I kind of understood the exploitation factor. But they weren't like abusing them. No. I feel like people have kind of in more recent years, I think, watched Eight Passengers with a very like, this is fucked up. But I feel like they had before that, it was just like people were fans of them. And I like can't watch one clip without being severely uncomfortable. And as far as where the kids are now, nobody's entirely sure, obviously, for their privacy, like we're not kind of privy to that information as the public. But also something interesting to note is that the dad used to be a professor at BYU. I know. And apparently yeah. got let go a while ago. There's a website called Rate My Professor. And when you're in college, you can look up your professors and there's reviews of like, you want this teacher, you don't want this one. They give a lot of homework, they do this. And apparently all of the reviews are like, he is the worst teacher ever. He is controlling. He's rude. He's just, it just reminded me because I'm scrolling and there's like a picture of um, Sherry at BYU and stuff. And she looks so happy in all of these. It's so sad to not accept your children for who they are and to never get to know them and who they become. Like, I feel like that's such an ultimate failure as a parent to just be like so controlling to the point where they have no choice but to become estranged from you. And then you just never get to know the happy, free version of them. Like the ultimate flex of, of a parent is like knowing your children in the best part of their lives. And she'll never know that. Well, and thank God that kids are so resilient 
that they have to be like they hopefully will be okay and they will be able to live lives without being under ruby's fucking crazy control all the time so if you look at sherry's story she um actually i think sherry was one of the first people to post anything like before the news even broke it's just like a picture of a cop car outside of a house and it just says finally <sighs> so that one was pretty vague but then she says hi all today has been a big day me and my family are so glad justice is being served we've been trying to tell the police and cps for years about this and are so glad they finally decided to step up kids are safe but there's a long road ahead please keep them in your prayers and also respect their privacy yeah i think the privacy thing really comes into play but I have to believe the family obviously like not Ruby and Jody, but the other family has their best interest at heart and is gonna push um, in any way needed there. I feel like everyone on the internet feels this kind of like parasocial connection to these kids hoping they're okay and they wanna know more, but truly these kids should never have to be online again. Ever. So those were the day of, and then since then she has posted on her story and said, connections and moms of truth needs to go. Please report their Instagram accounts and encourage everybody to unfollow them. They do not deserve such a large audience. I can't believe they even have an audience, to be honest. I was just gonna say, you can say that again. They should have never had one. They weren't giving good advice and they're fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, the thing is too, is that we've seen it many times where on YouTube, for instance, when there are charges brought against a creator, then their channel will be demonetized and then they'll kind of be removed from a platform. Usually on YouTube, it'll just be demonetized. But I do like, hello, Twitter? Facebook, like, can they go? Especially Facebook, is that not like their main shtick? Yeah, for, for connections. Yeah. It brings up a whole nother conversation with YouTube and family channels about child labor. How are there all of these child labor laws? I mean, not good ones, I don't think, for um, like child actors. But it's like, these kids are literally not getting paid to do this and they're just being exploited and forced to be on camera as much as the parents want. Well, that's the thing is like, people like Sherry Frank. Is she set for life because her mom with millions of followers made hundreds of thousands of dollars throughout the years that they vlogged her life? No. No, she had to cut her whole family off and leave to be able to just like live a normal life. I want to say that I've heard that certain states are working on labor laws specific to social media, which I honestly hope is true because I think it's so forgotten in the grand scheme of things. Um, and it is such a problem. That's what I'm saying. Like there should be some kind of like, you shouldn't be able to monetize content with kids in it unless you have proper things in place, I guess. But I don't even know how you would monitor that. Recently, I was working on a project for the company right and one of the main things that I was advising them not to do because they work with children is like a children's brand I was like don't work with family vloggers and when I was showing examples I was going to their Instagrams I wasn't cherry picking anything I would just go on their feed and I had like color coded dots on how many posts were with their children and how many posts were sponsored and it's insanity. Like they literally pull out their fucking children to do sponsorships. Like, come here, come to the kitchen. We need to film for a Nestle. Alien, we've just talked about, they didn't consent to it. Like if they grow up and they're like 18 now and they're like, what do you mean my entire life is on the internet that anyone can go look at? Like some people are embarrassed to like show baby pictures. Meanwhile, there's these kids are like, Oh, by the way, here's me being abused by my mom yeah. for 10 years. Well, that's the thing. Oh, that's a whole other layer to it. When you look at it where you're just like, man, not only did they have to live this, they have to deal with it being documented for the rest of their life. You know, you have these bad memories of like being a kid sometimes where your parents fucked up here and there. Imagine that being on fucking camera and like other people commenting, praising your mom while she did that to you. Or like, I don't know, I'm sure they even had comments of people making fun of them. Like it's just this other layer of absolutely oh, sure. fucked that is hard to fathom. But where we're at today is, again, Sherry has spoken out. The sisters have spoken out in conjunction. They all had like a joint statement. I think there's three sisters of Ruby, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so Ellie posted on her her Instagram. It looks like it's one of those um, collab posts with the other sisters. And it says, for the last three years, we've kept quiet on the subject of our sister Ruby Frank for the sake of her children. Behind the public scene, we have done everything we could to try and make sure the kids were safe. We wouldn't feel right about moving forward with regular content without addressing the most recent events. Once we do, we will not be commenting on it further. Ruby was arrested, which needed to happen. Jody was arrested, which needed to happen. The kids are now safe, which is the number one priority. I think one of the sisters after that then posted a YouTube video, but it's kind of relaying the same exact sentiment. And it is Thursday evening and this week has been nothing that I could have anticipated. I don't think any of us could have really anticipated. If you have the internet, you have seen news articles on my sister 
Ruby from the eight passengers and my sisters and I, we are on the very same page. We put out a message. You can read that on Instagram. And for the last three years, we have truly clung on to each other and offering support to one another. And I don't think any of us could have ever seen this coming. I, we all did as much as we could legally and you don't know what you don't know. I do feel a little bit numb at this point. I, the only thing that we ultimately care about is that our nieces and nephews are safe and they are. And again, there is 911, you know, calls that kind of like show how concerned people were that did witness these children. There's a lot of just troubling shit that's coming out. And I'm sure by the time we post this, there's going to be so many more updates. I feel like that happens literally every time we post. But there's always stuff that comes out after. If there's anything that's like big, um, we'll post it. But I don't think Ruby's getting out of jail. I don't think Jody's getting out of jail. I mean, they were denied bail, but I really think they're fucked. And for good reason, and I'm so happy that they are. Sorry, I was reading ahead in the New York Times article. It says, Hildebrandt reportedly made statements to police that the children should, quote, never be allowed around any other kids. What the fuck does that mean? That I feel like she's like trying to make it seem like they were like abusing each other. Honestly, and this is not in any world an out for either one of them, but they are extremely delusional in the way they've built this life together, you know, on this foundation of abuse. And I think that like isolation is a big part of that. And I think that she's extremely worried that her kids would be around other kids for that reason. That's just like kind of what I'm grasping from that. I think that even in her arrest and that should be a wake up call, I think they're so fucking deluded and evil that they're just like, don't let my kids around other kids. Like, I don't know. It's just... Well, and, but that's not even, that's not Ruby saying that. That's Jody saying that. Well, I think Jody, we've established, kind of calls the shots. Yeah, but it's like they're not her kids. Well, that's the thing is like for the time being where they lived with her, they kind of were. Jody got to decide on all that. I'm assuming. Obviously, Ruby was a huge part of it and she's just as fucking evil as Jody. But I think Jody had so much to do with it where she kind of pulled like a stepmom shit or I don't know what the fuck she was pulling, but she was a big part of their lives for the worst, obviously. Yeah, wait. So And Jody doesn't have any kids of her own. What? No, uh, she has to have kids. I don't know. But why, why have we never heard about her kids? I just realized that. Oh, I'm my like, God. but why would she have a mom parenting group if no, she no, isn't no, no, a mom? No, 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 no. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. She does have children. I'm seeing on this red. I'm not sure exactly how much because she's definitely a lot more private than Ruby was as far as like, you know, talking about her situation. Jail. No, but look at this fucking comment I just came across on this Reddit. And obviously this is alleged, but holy fuck. It's someone saying this woman referring to Jody Hildebrandt ruined my parents 50 plus years of marriage. She is awful and got my mom thinking strangely. Jody brainwashed my mom. My dad agreed also. Jody threatened to sue my dad for posting her news story about how the Mormon church was no longer referring to Jody as a counselor. They are both dead now and I blame Jody. She is a terrible person. I don't know like the logistics of that, but like someone responded and said, I am so sorry. I believe you. You blame Jody for their death. The person replied, yes, 100%. She's a horrible person with no conscience. She used my parents for money i hope she burns in hell and you would think that's like an isolated story but if you scroll on the eight passenger snark page there's a lot of people who like have stories with jody and i obviously we can't verify if they're true or not but she was a counselor i'm pretty sure when we talked about her the last time we read comments similar to that yeah i feel like some people could be lying you know in certain situations like this but we do know why she was removed as a counselor and why she no longer can counsel people and i don't know just seems insane that there's so many people with stories about her this is alleged. This is a person on Reddit. So just take it with a grain of salt. But so she's not married, y'all. In fact, from what I've inferred, Jody didn't raise her kids for the most part. And the stepmom seemed to be the one who raised them. Which like, and then she fucking makes a parenting group. Like, I know that they were fucked up, but this was honestly the worst thing that could have happened. Uh, shy of like them not being here anymore. Like this is literally just so bad. And I'm just glad that they got out. And um, yeah, I wish the best for them. I don't honestly want to stay updated with the children so much because I feel like unless they're in some sort of danger that having the public know about something in regards to them would help them. I really don't want to like keep tabs on them. I don't think that's fair. No, no, no. I think we'll, if we do any updates in the future, we'll keep it to the like trial whenever that will happen I guess anyway that's all we're gonna cover in this episode it was honestly a heavy one and one that we felt needed like our undivided attention just to kind of cover everything we know right now and just does, feels a little weird to just jump into 
another internet drama thing right now. We were going to even do like we, we there was one more pink sauce update from yeah. the last episode, but um we'll t- we'll talk about that next week. Yeah, yeah. We just we'll leave it at that. I feel kind of bad too cuz I know that a lot of people come onto the show to like decompress and not, you know what I mean? And I feel like when we cover things like this, obviously it's really difficult, but it also as I said, like I've n- this has been the most tagged I've ever been in a story because I think everyone is aware of it. Oh yeah. And if you're not aware of it, I think everyone needs to be aware of it because it's such yeah. a specific social media niche of dangerous people that we all need to be aware of things happening like this because we need to know how to point people like this out in the future and um, hold them accountable before children get hurt to this point. But anyway, um, that's it. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this was a tough one to get through, but if you made it to the end, we appreciate you. Yeah, that's it. We will be back on Friday and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.